This was not the next subject I was going to make a video on. I can have it in my mind to go one way, but if the Lord is moving a different way, then I need to follow Him. I hope all of us are willing to do that. Can you imagine a preacher having a sermon prepared and ready to go some Sunday morning, but the Lord is deciding to move in a different direction? I hope the preacher can shift from what they thought they were going to preach and move the way the Lord wants to go. Although this subject of listening isn't the next subject I was going to make a video on, I think it can be related very much to being led by the Holy Spirit, which in my last video I was hopeful to talk more about in the future. So, in that case, it is not off course. Even if it did seem off course to me, I would still want to follow. Listening is important. When you listen to someone, it shows that you care, first of all. I think it is also an expression of love and respect, because when you listen, you have to stop talking and let the other person talk. At that point, it's not about you, it's about them. Sometimes it is not easy to listen. For example, sometimes when someone is talking, you have something to say and you want to say it. That's fine, but let the other person finish their line of thought. Control your urge to speak before they are finished. At other times, sometimes when I listen to someone, I understand that they want to vent. They're not looking for a conversation. They want to vent. They want to tell someone what is troubling them in some way, and they want me to listen. I understand that by patiently listening to them, I am helping to bear their burden, in a way, so I will give myself up to be that for them. On the other hand, when you don't listen, it can be the opposite of love and respect. Have you ever found yourself talking to someone and then realize they are not listening to you? How did you feel about that? I have had that happen to me, and it doesn't make me feel good at all. It makes me feel like I was wasting the effort of talking to them. Have you ever found yourself talking to someone and then realize they are looking at their phone and not listening to you? How did that make you feel? I imagine it made you feel unimportant or not cared about. At least less important and less cared about than whatever they were up to on their phone. I remember one day I was at the kitchen sink washing dishes. A person who was with me at the time asked me a deeper question. I will name them Catherine for the purposes of this video, although that is not their name. I didn't want to answer them because from past experiences with Catherine, I already knew they were probably not going to listen, so I didn't want to go to the effort of answering their deeper question. It's not that the topic of the question didn't interest me, it did interest me. I just didn't want to talk if the person wasn't going to listen, and I had a feeling they weren't going to listen, so what was the point of talking about it? I told them I would rather not talk about it. They kept prying and wanted to talk about it, asking me this deeper question again. I resisted, knowing that I would go to the effort of explaining the thing, and they would probably not listen. They pried some more, and finally I relented to answering their question. A few sentences into my explanation, I glanced at them only to see that they were looking at their phone. It bothered me and hurt me. It felt rude and offensive. Why ask a question and pry for an answer if you don't want to really listen to the answer, is my question. On top of that, I felt I had known better than to take the time to answer their question, but didn't listen to myself and relented to their prying, and to what end? Only to feel unheard. Not being listened to has hurt me enough where now I want to be careful not to hurt others in that way, because I know how it feels. To me, not listening is a quick way to make a person feel unloved or not valued. I want to actively make the choice to listen undistracted when someone is talking to me. I want to care enough about the person to listen. I want to respect them enough to listen. On another occasion, 
Catherine had complained to me about various things, such as being tired. I told them, why don't you go to bed earlier? They did not listen, so they remained tired. I saw the ridiculousness of what can happen when a person does not listen to sound and simple advice. One day I was a passenger riding along with them in their vehicle. They had some sort of navigation instructions going on their phone, telling them step by step, turn by turn, how to get to their destination. Things were going all right. The navigation system's voice said to turn here or turn there, and they followed along. Then Catherine started talking over the navigation system's voice and missed the next instruction, therefore missing the next turn. They did not listen. Now they were stressed out because they were momentarily lost after missing that turn. Again, I saw the ridiculousness of not listening. I had more than one argument with Catherine about how they did not listen to me. Then I felt convicted in my heart because I realized that I have done the same thing with the Lord. The same thing. I saw it quite plainly. It was in seemingly small ways that I did not heed the voice of wisdom, which I attribute to the Lord. Seemingly small things. I recalled some of them. They were so numerous, I don't remember all the times I didn't listen, but I remember some of them. For example, I washed my laundry at the laundromat the other day. Instead of waiting around at the laundromat for another hour or so to dry my laundry, I brought it home and intended to dry it in the dryer in the house, the house that had the fire at the beginning of the year. So I brought my clean but wet laundry home in a bag, which is heavy and cumbersome, by the way. The dryer had been cleaned of the soot from the fire and had been run several times already. I thought it was safe to use, but when I opened the door of the dryer, for a moment I looked at that place where the lint is collected, and it looked kind of dark. Like, dark from soot, perhaps, but not terribly bad. In that brief moment, a thought came to my mind of something like, my clothes might come out smelling like smoke. Maybe don't use the dryer. I did not listen to that and dried my laundry in the dryer anyway. I was tired of dealing with it and wanted it done. Later, I folded my laundry and put it away. That evening, I put on a shirt to go to bed in and it smelled like smoke. I was so upset. I was very upset. I ended up rewashing all that laundry and drying it in a different dryer, but I look back and see that I had that brief thought of maybe not using that dryer when I saw the dark colored lint catcher, but I used it anyway. Another example of my not listening to the voice of wisdom is the other day I ate ice cream. It was mochi ice cream, which is basically balls of ice cream covered in this rice dough, about as big as a golf ball. I believe it is an Asian style of ice cream. Anyway, I ate two of them. After I ate one, there was that brief thought of maybe I shouldn't eat two. Well, I ate two anyway, and then felt overly full. They have been seemingly small things, everyday things, where I have not listened. It bothers me a great deal that I have not listened, where if I had, I would have been better off. So I can complain about Catherine not listening to me, but I realized that, sadly, I have done the same thing with the Lord. That is how I feel. I feel as if in seemingly small ways, I have been given sound advice, simple but wise advice in my everyday life, but have not listened. It bothers me. I want to listen every time. I heard it, I just did not listen. It can bother me to the point where my level of hope drops, and I wonder if I will ever listen to those brief and fleeting thoughts of wise advice I get. They come so quietly, softly, so briefly and they have been dismissed by other thoughts that rush in so quickly, like, the dryer is fine, 
It'll be fine, and I just want to get my laundry done. I want to listen to those very brief thoughts of wise advice. I want to listen and to act in the moment, not look back later and think, wow, I should have listened. And what about more important things than laundry and ice cream? Will I listen then? I often do listen to the Lord, particularly in ways that seem more significant to me than laundry and ice cream. However, personally I feel that I am being refined and trained even more, fine-tuned to listen to the smallest of things, everyday things. As I become more sensitive to the small stuff, I notice that I'm being guided and helped by the Lord more than I noticed before. In everyday things, not only in things that seem bigger or more spiritual, like sharing the gospel with someone or praying for healing with someone you barely know or something like that. Do you know what I mean? And personally, I'm okay with working on heeding the voice of wisdom over laundry or ice cream portions. I'm okay with being trained in the small things, even in what thoughts I should not be thinking. I'm okay with being trained in the behind the scenes stuff. These types of training and discipline are usually things that only you and God are really aware of, and I've been saying they are small, but I think they are very important. Seems to me a person can have their public persona, their public words and public actions, and put on a good show if they want to, and other people can see that. But what is going on in private? What is going on in those areas where only you and God are working on things together? Do people care about the unseen stuff? Seems to me some people might care more about what others see than what God sees. I want it to be the other way around, where what God sees is more important than what people see. I have observed that not listening can bring on a problem that I would not have had if I had listened. Furthermore, I know how it hurts to not be listened to and I don't want to hurt the Lord like that. I want to listen to Him, even in those seemingly small, everyday things. Though I see where I have not listened, I console myself by understanding that I probably have listened to those brief thoughts of wisdom more than I realize. It is just that I have listened, and then never experienced what problem I avoided by listening, and so those moments don't stand out as much to me. I probably have listened quite often to wisdom and just don't notice it so much. What I notice is when I don't listen to wisdom. I tend to think people have already been made aware of things, they just have not listened. They heard, but they have not listened as it pertains to then taking action. It has surprised me, somewhat, to see issues people have in their lives, issues they are not happy about only to hear them say that they already know it is something they need to work on. They already know and are already aware, but for whatever reason, do not act on what they already know. They will continue to complain about it, wish it were different, wish they were different, but do not do what it takes to change it and make it better. They already know. If it's an issue of pride in their life, most likely they have had ample opportunities to take actions toward humility. If it is an issue of being tired, they have already been advised to go to bed earlier. I'm not saying everyone already knows, but I'm getting the picture that a lot already know, but have not acted. If the Lord instructs you on something, better to listen while it is between you and Him. Because sometimes if you don't listen, He'll get someone else to tell it to you, and you will probably like it less coming from another person than coming from the Lord, but you didn't listen to him, so he gets someone else to tell it to you, still trying to get you to come around and listen. I have had that happen to me, but it did get me to listen, thank God. Look out for the different ways God may teach you. He will help you to learn. He wants you to learn, not simply struggle forever with a lesson, but to learn from it and then move forward. The aim is to gain. He's shaping and making you still and testing and training. 
If you want to grow as a Christian, then let it be. Then walk with the Lord and live in a way that's in accordance with your desire to grow and with the teaching and training required. I believe the Lord was consoling me one day about not being listened to and how that hurt me, saying that I think it is difficult to get Catherine to listen to me, even for five to ten minutes undistracted, but that I should see how some of his people don't listen to him at all. It is a rare thing for a believer to listen for his voice for one minute during prayer undistracted. It is rare also for them to listen to him regarding issues in their life that he has already made aware to them several times. For someone they claim as their God, it is shocking how little they listen to him, if at all. He knows what it is like to not be listened to. He knows exactly, and he doesn't like it either. He knows what it is like to have someone say they love him, but not show it in their actions. He knows exactly. For any of you who may have been hurt by not being listened to by others and are still licking your wounds, I want to try to comfort you by saying that God listens to you. He is not distracted. He heard every word that others didn't hear. He is not looking at his phone when you are talking about something meaningful to you. He listens to you very carefully. He is never too busy or too tired to listen. He cares the most. He listens better than anyone else does. He knows what is in your heart, too, before you utter a word. That is about all I have to say for now. The message is to listen. And really, not just listen, but then heed what you hear. I want to get better at listening to those brief thoughts of wisdom and not immediately disregard them. Like I said, this was not the next subject I intended to speak about, but it will be a good building block for the subject of being led by the Holy Spirit, which, Lord willing, I will talk more about in the future. Before I go, I want to read a few Bible verses, and um, probably more than a few. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man listens to advice. Every young man who listens to me and obeys my instructions will be given wisdom and good sense. Yes, if you want better insight and discernment, and are searching for them as you would for lost money or hidden treasure, then wisdom will be given you, and knowledge of God himself. You will soon learn the importance of reverence for the Lord and of trusting him. For the Lord grants wisdom. His every word is a treasure of knowledge and understanding. He grants good sense to the godly, his saints. He is their shield, protecting them and guarding their pathway. He shows how to distinguish right from wrong, how to find the right decision every time. For wisdom and truth will enter the very center of your being, filling your life with joy. You will be given the sense to stay away from evil men who want you to be their partners in crime, men who turn from God's ways to walk down dark and evil paths and exult in doing wrong, for they thoroughly enjoy their sins. Everything they do is crooked and wrong. Only wisdom from the Lord can save a man from the flattery of prostitutes. These girls have abandoned their husbands and flouted the laws of God. Their houses lie along the road to death and hell. The men who enter them are doomed. None of these men will ever be the same again. Follow the steps of the godly instead, and stay on the right path, for only good men enjoy life to the full. Evil men lose the good things they might have had, and they themselves shall be destroyed. Can't you hear the voice of wisdom? She is standing at the city gates, and at every fork in the road, and at the door of every house. Listen to what she says. Listen, men, she calls. How foolish and naive you are. Let me give you understanding. O oh, foolish ones, let me show you common sense. Listen to me, for I have important information for you. 
Everything I say is right and true, for I hate lies and every kind of deception. My advice is wholesome and good. There is nothing of evil in it. My words are plain and clear to anyone with half a mind, if it is only open. My instruction is far more valuable than silver or gold. For the value of wisdom is far above rubies. Nothing can be compared with it. Wisdom and good judgment live together, for wisdom knows where to discover knowledge and understanding. If anyone respects and fears God, he will hate evil. For wisdom hates pride, arrogance, corruption, and deceit of every kind. I, wisdom, give good advice and common sense. Because of my strength, kings reign in power. I show the judges who is right and who is wrong. Rulers rule well with my help. I love all who love me. Those who search for me shall surely find me. Unending riches, honor, justice, and righteousness are mine to distribute. My gifts are better than the purest gold or sterling silver. My paths are are those of justice and right. Those who love and follow me are indeed wealthy. I fill their treasuries. The Lord formed me in the beginning, before he created anything else. From ages past, I am. I existed before the earth began. I lived before the oceans were created, before the springs bubbled forth their waters onto the earth, before the mountains and the hills were made, Yes, I was born before God made the earth and fields and high plateaus. I was there when he established the heavens and formed the great springs in the depths of the ocean. I was there when he set the limits of the seas and gave them his instructions not to spread beyond their boundaries. I was there when he made the blueprint for the earth and oceans. I was always at his side like a little child. I was his constant delight, laughing and playing in his presence. And how happy I was with what he created, his wide world and all his family of mankind. And so, young men, listen to me, for how happy are all who follow my instructions. Listen to my counsel. Oh, don't refuse it, and be wise. Happy is the man who is so anxious to be with me that he watches for me daily at my gates, or waits for me outside my home. For whoever finds me finds life and wins approval from the Lord. But the one who misses me has injured himself irreparably. Those who refuse me show that they love death.